we came across a thriving oasis in the Chinese desert, which is sometimes referred to as the forbidden zone of life. In China's deserts, there are grains, many flora, and enormous reservoirs. In the last 60 years, the world's most successful country in controlling the desert has been China. In the desert, 800 million trees were planted. No nation, in my opinion, is disposed to do this. It lacks both the persistence and the patience. American sand control specialists once held the view that China will manage the desert through national finance and that this strategy would fail if there was no money to be made from recycling. Why then is China prepared to do this? How many of China's 800 million planted trees are still standing? 20% of China's land area, or 2.62 million square kilometers, is made up of desert. Before we go on, subscribe to Chen News to watch about other amazing projects. The majority of them are found in northwest China, with Xinjiang, Inner Mongolia, Gansu, and Ningxia serving as examples. In the early 1950s, the locals were severely harmed by these deserts. China was still having difficulty finding enough food and clothes, and there was no funding available for desert control. All that can be done by people when quicksand erodes their homes and farms is to move. However, human forbearance will only increase the desert savagery. Africa and the Middle East are both impacted by the Sahara Desert, and when springtime dust storms occur, Egypt takes the most hit. In extreme circumstances, the capital, Cairo, Alexandria, and other locations will be impacted. Transportation and locals will be inconvenienced by canceled flights and shuttered ports. The desert also harms the United States. In the past, the United States was the nation in the world that was most impacted by sandstorms. In America, the 1920s and 1930s were known as the sandstorm era. In the end, the United States invested a significant amount of labor and materials to create a protective forest belt that reduced the frequency of sandstorms. China is also the same. Strong gusts blow sand and wind into people's eyes during the most dangerous times in Beijing, the capital of China. Sandstorms tore through it for 20 days in a row, and the dust down from the sky like rain. The people of China who are impacted by desertification. Desertification will also have a negative impact on land production and exacerbate natural disasters. Therefore, China has followed the lead of the United States and implemented initiatives including the building of protected forests and the afforestation of significant sandstorm-prone areas, as well as large-scale sand prevention and control in order to alleviate the problem of deteriorating deserts. In a matter of decades, China started to plant a significant number of trees in the desert around this period. There were 800 million trees planted. One of the most important initiatives for sand control is China's Three North Shelter Belt. Despite being expensive, the annual area of trees planted is equal to more than half of South Korea's Three North Shelter Belt. However, I must confess that the outcomes are outstanding. But several of these trees have also passed away recently. And if it doesn't, people won't be able to keep planting trees. In China's Tacoma Cotton Desert, it is difficult to predict if the desert would worsen once more. A lot of populous yew, Fredrika, also known as the undead tree in the desert, may be seen. Both dryness and high temperatures are not a problem for it. The primary channel can go 10 millimeters below, while the lateral path can go as far as 30 am. These routes can reduce this plant's need on water, block wind, fix sand, and enhance soil. People in China discovered an underground river with a suitable water source beneath the Tacoma Cotton Desert. However, it is incredibly difficult and not a good idea to mine for water sources in the desert. Therefore, the water supply for growing trees in the desert can only be acquired by drilling wells and is collected from the higher river, where the melting water of glaciers and snow accumulates in the summer. The Kabuki Desert is China's most effective government. The Kabuki Desert has been recovered, according to a study issued by the United Nations Environment Program. An average desert area of 9.69 million MU sequesters 15.4 million tons of carbon, conserves 24,376 billion cubic meters of water, and releases 18.3 million tons of oxygen each year. The local population is propelled out of poverty and toward wealth by the shift in the natural environment. A miracle of turning the desert into an oasis has now been accomplished by turning 56% of the desert into an oasis. 
Due to this, the United Nations gave the desert the Land Life Award and designated the desert's governance model as a benchmark for the global governance of deserts. How does China deal with the desert then? China's richest billionaire, Jack Ma, joined the Sanda Control Project in 2016. He created both the forest and the public welfare software. 10,000 daily steps may be used as a health goal to provide energy, after which users can use the program to plant a tree. This type of tree is not being planted virtually. In addition to giving the customer a certificate with a unique number, the corporation will pay to plant a real tree in the desert. To discover the tree you placed on the software, head to the desert. This has a lot of significance. Since the software's introduction, in China, the area dedicated to growing trees has increased. By 2022, 320 million galaxies will have been planted on trees using the whole amount of energy generated by users. China has also incorporated different techniques to manage the desert. In order to nurture green vegetation, the first solar power stations are set up in the desert. By blocking off direct sunshine, photovoltaic panels may successfully lower the evaporation of surface water. Evaporation may be reduced by 20% to 30% thanks to the shade effect of solar panels, and the photovoltaic module board can also significantly slow down the wind. This has a significant positive impact on how well plants can survive. Many types of surface vegetation, including pastures, can grow for the reasons mentioned above. Second, creating desert reserves and digging wells close to the desert. These two initiatives are unquestionably miraculous initiatives in China. China constructed a 148 million cubic meter reservoir to help the desert control region with its water supply issues. To construct the reservoir, about 40 years were needed. After it was finished, the reservoir supplied water for the two deserts close to it, in addition to irrigating more than 600,000 additional acres of farmland owned by local farmers. Numerous plants are cultivated in the desert next to the reservoir, and wheat grass was planted there to fix sand. These deserts were formerly barren washes of yellow sand, sparsely inhabited, and life was banned there. Animals have established homes here, and they are now vibrant. The third plant fixes the sand. The most basic and efficient way for managing quicksand is this one. Grid-based plant planting may help with windbreak and sand fixation, ecological environment repair and enhancement, as well as provide fuel for humans and cattle in mountainous places. China uses artificial plants to stabilize sand dunes and stop the spread of deserts, creating extensive sand-blocking sand forests and re-establishing natural flora. China has also developed a less disruptive airflow tree planting technique. A tiny hole with a diameter of few centimeters and a depth of one meter in the sand is punched using the water jet shot by a pressurized water pistol. The pit is then swiftly excavated and the seedlings are placed. Backfilling and tree planting, watering, all at once. Planting a tree takes less than 10 seconds on average. Each tree just needs three liters of water to be planted. This technique may boost the survival rate of seedlings from 10% to roughly 90% while lowering the cost of planting trees from $700 per hectare to $500 per person. A fact, China has developed considerably more sophisticated sand management techniques over the past few decades, ranging from artificial to intelligent ones. Among the many sand management techniques, they have discovered some of the most successful ones. Because of the government's altruistic commitment, China may become the world's most successful country in desert control. If the government is unwilling to invest a significant amount of money in this initiative, the desert's degradation would unavoidably cause problems for the locals, forcing hundreds of millions of people to evacuate. It will inevitably grow to be China's biggest headache. The Chinese deserts now have a vast number of green vegetation, creating a substantial natural barrier that allows the locals to stop worrying about their living conditions. This is the result of many generations' worth of work, and it demonstrates the Chinese people's tenacity. Given the current state of the mighty desert and the fact that government efforts alone are insufficient to manage it, such accomplishments have astounded American experts. But there are 1.4 billion people living in China. Along with Chinese, hundreds of thousands of people labor on desert control projects annually. Some foreigners are also interested in desert control. Many of the trees that were planted perished, but because to human efforts, the desert is now no longer covered in yellow sand and has instead transformed into a tranquil oasis that is brimming with optimism. 
Write in comments, what are your thoughts on this? Also, click on these video to watch about the most shocking projects.